Hi third graders, it's Mr. Olson and the topic of today's video is math and how we're going to be turning in our math work. You've already been getting into IXL this week, doing a great job answering questions and we're going to keep doing that every single day. But we also wanted to add back in our daily work that we've been doing in our math journals when we were at school. Amazingly, you guys have already done 81 different math practice pages throughout the year and we want to keep that going. But we won't be able to turn in our math journals to your teachers every day, so we've got a new way to do that while we're doing our distance learning. It's called Google Forms. Now if you've never used Google Forms, do not worry. This video is going to show you how to do it, and it's really as simple as clicking a few buttons. When you went into your Google Classroom today, you probably noticed that there was an extra thing to do in your math assignments. Number one was to watch the Google Forms video. You're doing that right now and if you keep watching to the end you're gonna see the answers to your work are right here in this video. Number two is to complete your math review practice in Google Forms. I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. And number three will be to do your IXL practice again for 15 minutes like you've done already this week. So you're probably wondering what is Google Forms and how am I going to use it to turn in my daily math work? Well, each day we're going to have a math job that says complete math review practice in Google Forms. If you click the link next to that, it will bring you to your daily practice sheet, which is in Google Forms. After clicking that link, you'll be in Google Forms, which is where you're going to find your daily questions and be able to answer them and turn them into your teacher each day. The first thing you'll do is write in your name. By clicking on this box, you'll be able to type in your name so we know who's completing the assignment. Then you're going to scroll down, check to make sure that you're on the correct date, and if you keep scrolling down, you'll start to see the questions that you'll be answering for that day. Now, Just because we're turning in our work on the computer, it doesn't mean that we can't write down the questions and solve them in a notebook or on a piece of paper. It's really important that complicated questions get written down. We don't need to solve everything in our heads. In fact, complicated problems are most easily solved when we write them down. Today's math assignment has just four questions, which is way less than what you're used to doing at school. So what I did was I took my notebook paper and I cut it into four equal parts where I can solve my work. So let's take a look at question one. At the top of the slide, it tells us the heading, so I know this one is about addition. Below that is the directions. Add these numbers. The numbers are, are already stacked for me, and I need to add together 34 plus 61. Below the slide is the directions again. What is the sum of these two numbers? And below that, is four options for answers. I need to figure out which one is the correct answer. Well, I wrote it down in my notebook. I stacked it just like we've been practicing. And when I added the ones place together, I found that four plus one made five, and three tens, which is 30, plus six tens, which is 60, made 90 for a grand total of 95. Let's see if that's one of our options. When I solved the problem in my notebook, I came up with an answer of 95. Let's see if that's one of our answer choices. 59, 90, 95, or 96. I'm going to click on 95 because that's the correct answer for question 1. Now that I'm finished with question 1, I'm going to scroll down and I'll find question 2 with the answer options below. For question 2, I need to solve a place value problem. The directions for question 2 about place value say write the number shown by the blocks in standard form. Of course, whenever I do place value, I need to watch out and see if there's a placeholder 0. I'm going to start here with the thousands and count those, then the hundreds, then the tens, then the ones. So counting my thousands blocks, I can see that there's 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Looking next door, I'm going to count my hundreds, knowing there's 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. Next door there's nothing, 
So I'm finding out that there are zero tens where I'll need a placeholder zero. And if I look at the ones place, I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So after counting the blocks, I wrote it down in an expanded form to show my work. I found that there was 4,000 plus 600 plus zero tens plus seven for a total of 4,607. Let's see if that's one of the answer options. Well, there's the answer I found, 4,607. When I click that answer, I do want to be a little bit careful to make sure I'm getting the placeholder zero in the correct spot, and I don't accidentally click an incorrect answer. Once I've got number two done, then I'm going to scroll down again to find question three, which will be about multiplication. Question three asks me to multiply these numbers, five times 10. As we've studied multiplication this year, what five times 10 is really saying is that I have five groups with 10 in each group. And we're looking for the total amount when we do five times 10. Now there are a lot of strategies I know to solve five times 10. I could use my fingers and I count across 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I could also do repeated addition, adding 10 five times. I chose in my notebook to draw two different pictures. The first one is an equal groups drawing where I put 10 in each group for a total of 50. You also maybe could draw an array. So if you look down below, you could have five rows with 10 in each row. No matter what strategy you use, 5 times 10 will equal 50. We're back in our Google Forms doc, looking at question 3. Again, the question was, what is the product of 5 times 10? I go down and I find the equation that has the correct response. 5 times 10 equals 50. I make sure to click that so my teacher knows that I have the correct answer. Then I scroll down to question 4, which is our final question for today's daily work. For a final question, the directions ask us to round this number to the tens place. The number is 43, so I need to figure out which multiple of 10 43 is closest to. Well, if I look at the tens place, the number there is 4. That 4 stands for 40. So if I'm going to round this number down to the nearest 10, I would round down to 40. The next value up from 40 is 50. So if I round up, it's going to round to 50. But which number is 43 closest to? Is it 40 or 50? If I think about my number line, 43 would be about here, which would be closer to 40 than 50. If I want to use my shortcut, I could also solve it by looking at the 4, then looking next door and asking, is that number next door 5 or more? Number 3 is not, so I'm going to round this number down to 40. Here's the work I wrote down. I use the shortcut method to prove that 43 is closer to 40. Now that I know that the answer is 40, I'm going to click it in the answer choices down below, and I've completed all the questions for my math work for today. Before I turn this in, there are two important things I need to do. The first is to go back up and check my work. Going way up to the top, I make sure that I put my name in there, and then I look at each question and make sure that I mark the answer choice that I meant to mark. If I see any mistakes, I'm going to go back and fix them. Once I've checked my work, it's very important that I hit this button down at the bottom of the screen that says Submit. This will send my answers to my teacher so that they can know that I worked on my jobs today and they can check my work to see if it was accurate. Well, that's what you need to know for Google Forms to do your daily math work. I hope this video is helpful, and please reach out if you have any questions at all about how to click through Google Forms or how to submit your work to your teachers. We hope that you're able to do this every single day to grow your brain and keep practicing those skills that we've been working hard on all year.